What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 9 of Rebuilding Chelsea here in Football Manager 2017 and today I have for you guys our first ever Premier League match as Chelsea manager. Obviously an exciting landmark to reach but not the first time we have managed in the Premier League on this save. Of course this was a continuation of our Spurs save which if you didn't see the first season of, uh, well I recommend you to go check it out. Of course Back in the Premier League now, back in the big time with Chelsea, the board expectation for this year is to qualify for the European kind of cup or the UEFA cup as we don't have a real name fix, which is going to involve a top six finish or a cup win. That's not going to be that easy. Uh, a big task ahead of us, of course, we kind of balanced out the books a lot and sold a lot of players last season. Uh, financially, if I just show you the club kind of situation real quick, you can see we're £22 million in the red, but I haven't spent over our transfer budget. I'm not exceeding the wage budget. You'll notice down at the bottom here, financial fair play is being breached. Uh, just to explain this, because I know this confuses a few kind of people. There's two different elements of financial fair play. There is one that basically dictates how much of a loss you are allowed to make over a period of time. That period of time being the last three years. As you can see, your allowed loss is £15 million. Our current kind of budgets for this kind of year or this time period, £189 million in the green. So that part of financial fair play is fine. The bit we're concerned about is the wage expenditure, which basically limits the amount that you can uh, increase the amount you're paying for wages each year to your players. Now, because last year going down into the championship, I I cut our wage budget significantly it meant that the game and well the, the regulations meant I couldn't actually exceed or grow the wage budget that much however I decided to bite the bullet here and the, with the, these kind of financial restrictions uh, you can see here our allowed expenditure for the year is 93 million pounds we're set to spend 25% more than that and uh, well the reason that we are doing that is because I need to because I need to finish top six, but also because the only punishment you can have for this area of financial fair play is a fine. Uh, the financial fair play, which I believe means you get points deductions, is to do with losses over a period of time, and because we're not breaching that one, um, well, we are all in the good. Anyway, I appreciate explaining financial fair play, not how we want to start our new season in the Premier League, but it's something that I knew was going to be mentioned if someone noticed it. I wanted to get it out there and cleared, and hopefully it cleared up financial fair play a little bit uh, for some of you guys confused by it. Anyway, going into this season, I needed to build a Premier League side. I needed to bring in some players. Of course, last year, a big emphasis on youth. This year, I wanted to get in some ready-made Premier League players, preferably English with some experience who could really bolster the squad. Just looking at the transfers on the out quickly first, uh, you'll notice Willian has gone to Manchester United for £18 million. Of course, Willian on loan at Manchester United last year. Britta Sombolonga has left for QPR. Of course, a player we signed last year, didn't play that great for us. Uh, we've actually made £500,000 profit on him with him going to QPR now uh, for £8.5 million on QPR in the Premier League. So that's going to be an interesting one. Perhaps we will encounter him as this season progresses. Other kind of transfers of note. Uh, Thomas Callas has gone to Atlanta. Kennedy has gone to Angers. And Joseph Griffiths has uh, gone, as you can see here, to West Brom. Griffiths. He looked like an okay young player, but we have a lot better players. So I was kind of happy to let him go for the fee that West Brom paid. Anyway, those were the major sales on the outs. Uh, looking at a few other things here, we released a lot of players. A few players here might stand out as players you've heard of whilst playing Football Manager. Uh, Jamal Blackman, Lewis Baker, Piers On, to name a few. Worth noting, George Fawn, who we signed in January last year just to be a little bit of backup in the centre mid position, uh, I ended up releasing this year. Mutual termination, he was happy to agree to it. And you'll also notice a few loans here. A few good players on loan here. Uh, perhaps the pick of the bunch, Cameron Carter Vickers, uh, who we will talk about in just a second because he actually joined us this year. So looking on the transfers in as a whole, you can see we've spent £120 million. Some of this back dates to last season where we agreed fees for regens in advance and in fact a lot of these bids here uh, for kind of young kind of players from English clubs were just regens we picked up. In terms of the kind of notable of these, I guess of free transfers in general, uh, Adam Lalana joined us on a free transfer £48,000 a week as a rotation option. Very excited to have him in. A fantastic advanced playmaker. English, lots of experience. Something that I was determined to to add to the squad this year. In terms of the younger players coming in, uh, Jamie Wood, probably the pick of the bunch. English, 17 years old, looks like he could be a very, very good player for the future. £1.2 million from Arsenal, a really good fee for him, 17 years old. Excited to see how he gets on. Alan Diaz, another player actually worth a little bit of a mention. You can see here, he's rated fairly highly by my scouts. He's only just joined the club, so we don't really know that much about him, but he's got some potential. He's actually joined us for a release fee we could approach to sign him. 
uh, as a real footballer from River Plate for £1.1 million. Decided to bring him in. Looks like the Argentine keeper could be fairly useful in the future, although no work permit, unfortunately. Anyway, moving on to the transfers on the end. I'm going to go from top to bottom, I think, and we'll start with a, an Everton duo. Perhaps a, a surprising double move here, really. £50 million spent on Everton players. The first of these players, Ross Barkley. I absolutely love Ross Barkley. He's a player who I think showed a lot of promise in real life very early on in his career. And obviously he's gone on to become a mainstay of the England national team. In this save, he's not had the kind of greatest run of fixtures really. You can see last few years he has played very frequently for Everton without ever really shining. We paid £27 million for him, which is not cheap. However... I think he's a very, very exciting centre attacking mid. I think he can be a useful player for us. Uh, obviously, a reasonable fee paid for him. But if we look at the coach report here, a lot to like about Ross Barkley. And I feel like a lot of you know what we're going to get with him. Anyway, the other player we got from Everton, a re-signing of a player, a familiar player to Chelsea fans. Romelu Lukaku joins us. The Belgian, 25 years old, had a, a pretty poor season last year with Everton. Got nine goals in 30 games. Prior to that, 22 goals in a season is a really good kind of return. I was looking for a player who was kind of ready-made, ready for the Premier League up top. Of course, last year we relied on goals from Kelechi, Ihi and Nacho, uh, as well as some from Rashford. I needed a proper goal scorer, and by proper goal scorer, I mean someone who's been there, done it, got the postcard, a player who we know we can get goals from. And I think Lukaku is the man to fulfil that void. An exceptional player, only 25 years old, bags of international experience, l amazing physicals, good finisher of the ball. Excited to see what he can really bring, bring to the squad coming forward. Anyway, the next player joining us, a player who I talked about actually at the end of last year, because he was one of the first bits of business we got done. Chris Smalling joins us, 28 years old. As you can see, emerging trend here, experienced international, English as well, which is always a nice bonus. Very excited to have him in. Going to be a good centre-back, I think, for us this year. The next player we have, Theo Walcott, joined us for £10 million. I've got to be honest, I kind of balled something up here. And the thing that I balled up was the fact that I only offered him a one-year contract. He was a bit unsure about joining us anyway, but the fact we paid £10 million for a player we're not certain to keep beyond the first year might not prove to be the best bit of business. But Theo, obviously a fantastic player, explosive pace. Don't see us really starting him that much, if I'm honest. But I think he's a very, very good player to have on off the bench coming on, obviously, 19 acceleration, 18 pace. He's going to terrorise defences if they're kind of tiring it towards the end of a game. A player who can really inject some sp uh, pace into the attack. A player very much capable of starting as well if we need him to. So I was delighted to get him in. As I said, though, the contract, not the greatest. The next player we got in, a familiar face, a Tottenham Hotspur player, one of a few actually who we brought in this year. Of course, the Spurs side we previously managed. And, well, Carl Walker here, a player we actually signed a replacement for during our first season at Spurs, signing Danilo from Real Madrid. I decided to pick up Carl. He actually impressed me when I was manager at Spurs and he played for us. You can see last year he made 33 appearances, really didn't have the best of years for Spurs, who did actually finish fourth. So he didn't have a bad season, really. I think he's a very good right back for us, international experience bit older, a bit more mature than some of our other players. Again, great pace, Premier League player, uh, ready-made, an exceptional little right-back. And it was a position that we did need to get some kind of, I guess, fitness in and get, you know, just another player capable of playing there. The next player we have, Fabian Delph. Speaking of fitness... I'm a little bit split on Fabian Delph. I decided to bring him in because he was transfer listed and I got him for a reasonable fee. But his uh, injury proneness was something that was really flagged up to me as being a big problem potentially. You can see here looking at his injuries... He's had his fair share, so that is something definitely to keep an eye on. But 28 years old, he's coming in as a backup player. His wages aren't that small, but again, experienced English. Good little defensive midfielder. I feel like we've lacked a defensive midfielder, so I'm hoping that Fabian Delft can kind of come in and do that. He's got good leadership as well, so if we do need a captain to call upon with Zuma and Rajkovic both injured, he could definitely be kind of a third choice there. Great work, great, great teamwork. He's going to give us all for the team. Um, and yeah, you know, comes in as a backup, very, very cheap price paid. I'm pretty happy about it at just shy of £7 million. Anyway, the next player we have, Rodrigo Maeda. Uh, this guy, we've sent back on loan to Argentina, actually, to Estudantes. I probably butchered that pronunciation. Apologies to my Argentine viewers. Um, but this guy looks exceptional. Uruguayan didn't get a work permit. One for the future. Speaking of players for the future, Ramon Valenzuela, another player, similar mould. Set out to go on loan to Vitesse, this guy. Absolutely love him. Incredible in the air. Decent little physicals as well. He's only 18 years old and the Argentine player. Definitely one to keep an eye out on. You can see a lot of potential tip for him. Definitely excited to see how he gets on. Anyway, the last two players to talk about. A duo we actually signed from Spurs uh, at the end of the year. First player... Cameron Carton Vickers, a player who I've actually loaned now to fellow Premier League side Bournemouth, uh, where he will be playing as a first team player for them, which is great. 20 years old, American, a player who I actually promoted to the first team during our time 
at Tottenham. You can see last year uh, he actually went on loan to Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Championship and did reasonably. We have signed him for £2.6 million and then immediately loaned him to Bournemouth who are paying us £2.7 million for the duration of the loan. So we've already made money off him just because of the monthly fees and stuff. So I'm kind of happy about that. He's a good little player. It does leave us perhaps a little bit bare bones in the centre-back position. You know, Joe Gomez perhaps the, the natural replacement I or I author. Uh, but either way, I feel like he's a good player, going to be playing regular Premier League football. He needs it. Wasn't going to get that really with us. I'm happy about that. And the last pair we signed, Cole Walker-Peters. 21 years old, English player, signed again from Spurs. Exceptional physicals, good little defensive player. Only 21, room to grow. Excited to see what he might be able to do for us. And also, the fact he can play both fullback positions is very, very nice to have kind of on the bench, perhaps, to bring on if the time is right. So anyway, looking at our squad for this year, a little bit of injury news. Unfortunately, Charlie Masonda and Andreas Christiansen, both out injured for the opening game of the year, which is at home here against Leicester. If we just look at our team as a whole, our squad consists of 25 players, of which, if we just look at this, I'm really proud of this, actually. So out of the 25 players, 14 are English. Now, obviously, I've tried to get in some British players as well, but there just aren't that many around, unfortunately. English talent is really there. Looking at our kind of age of our squad as well, you can see, obviously, Ross Barkley, Lukaku, Smalling, uh, Walker, Delph, Walcott, Lalana. All players we've brought in this year, I was really determined to bring in some experience, and we've done that. And we've not brought in, you know, too much of it, I don't think, to upset the balance. There has been a few players demoted to the under-23s, you can see here, if we just look at them. A few players going out on loan, uh, players like Lecco, players like Bertran Traore, but they're going to benefit from that. They're still young players, still poten potential to fulfil, and we will be closely monitoring them. But in terms of our squad for this year, I'm very happy with kind of the overall balance of it. You can see we've got some kind of good players here. Harry Lewis, of course, a good little young English goalkeeper. Promoted him to the first team this year, probably third choice behind Elliot. Uh, but nevertheless, at 20 years old, looks like he could be a very, very good goalkeeper for the future. And kind of looking through our team as a whole, you can see there's a very strong core there. In the attacking midfield department, I really like the strength we've got here. Players like Walcott, Ihinaccio, Barkley on the bench. And well, when you start look at our starting 11 for today's opening game, it's pretty good. We are going to be persisting with the 4 2 3 1 system. Now, I've got to be honest, this may completely backfire this year, but with the board's expectations being for us to finish so highly, I feel like we kind of just have to go for it. You can see we're expected to qualify for the Euro Cup through participation in the Premier League. That is kind of top six. Is that realistic? I mean, it's higher than I would have liked, if I'm honest. But I feel like the players that we signed offer some nice experience. We have quality in the side. We never really lost that quality going down. And, uh, well, if we have a quick rundown of our starting 11 for today's game, I'm hoping for a good performance, really. So in goal, we've got Rajkovic, 22 years old, the Serbian, vice-captain at the club, improved a lot last year, still got room to grow as well. A player who I did actually at one point look at potentially replacing with either Joe Hart or Jack Butlin, but I've decided to stick with this guy just because I think he offers so much for us, and he was just immense for us last year. At left-back, Nathan Ake keeps his spot on the side. The Dutch player signed a new contract in the summer. Very excited about him for the future. Perhaps not got too much potential left to fulfil, but at 23 years old, a very good player in his position and definitely can do a job for us this year. At right back, of course, we have Kyle Walker. You kind of know what you're going to get from him. Incredible physicals, well-rounded mentals, and a, a decent defensive player all in all. At centre-back, we go with Kurt Zuma alongside Chris Smalling. Of course, Zuma last year really had player of the season by a massive margin. Was huge for us, the 23-year-old. Held on to him. Still three years left of his deal. Very excited to see what he can do this season. And alongside him, Chris Smalling, uh, who really last year was ousted, I think a little bit unfairly, by Manchester United. You can see the season before that had a very good year when they won the title. We've signed him for £17 million. Curious to see how he gets on, but I'm pretty confident he can come up big for us. Anyway, moving into the centre mid positions, Fabian Delph starts today. That is due to Christiansen's injury. Delph, a very good defensive player, his marking and heading ability kind of lets him down, unfortunately. Uh, but as a kind of centre mid on defend, they're kind of his two glaring weaknesses. Hopefully that won't be a massive drawback. We have got other options that we could play, like Anoma, uh, who is a good little defensive player. So it's one of those positions perhaps worth keeping an eye on. Of course, when Christiansen's fit, he would just slot in and be our kind of centre mid on defend every day of the week. He's a fantastic player in that area, aged only 22. Unfortunately, as you can see here, he's got a twisted knee at the moment. Not a major injury, but it does mean he won't be in this opening game of the season. Anyway, a deep line playmaker, we go with Will Hughes. Becoming a mainstay of the England side now with 11 caps. Really good for him, 23 years old. Had a fantastic year in the Championship. Hopefully, he can just kind of pick that up and continue here in the Premier League. On the left attacking mid position, we go with Adam Lalana. Now, Masonda would normally start here, but is unfortunately injured. Lalana comes in. 
I'm excited to see what Lolana can do because he is a fantastic player. You can see here, uh, as an advanced playmaker on support, he's a, he's just so well suited to this role. He's going to be playing out wide. He's either footed. He can cut inside or maybe go wide. I I don't know what to expect from Lolana. He was released by Liverpool. We offered him a trial. We got him in on pretty small wages. So one to keep an eye on. Either way, Marcus Rashford out on the right-hand side. He won Young World Cup player uh, of the tournament uh, in this kind of summer's World Cup, which was great for him. Obviously, 20 years old. Joined us last year for £45 million. A massive fee paid. I expect big performances from him this year. If we look at his report here, you can see he's perhaps not an immense Premier League player, but I definitely think he's going to be good for us. Going to be playing as an inside forward for today's game. This is one of the positions that will be fairly competitive this year, as will the striker position. Very form defend uh, dependent, I feel like, uh, with the likes of Walcott and Nacho waiting in the wings. Anyway, in centre attacking mid, we go with Martin Odegaard. A lot of interest around this guy from Juventus, from Barcelona, from Real Madrid in the summer. We've kept hold of him. And I want to keep hold of this guy for as long as I can. The Norwegian, an absolutely incredible player for us. One of the best players in the team last year. 18 goals and 14 assists. Here's hoping he can have a similar year this year. Anyway, last but not least in our starting 11 for today's game, we go with Lukaku up top, making his return debut to the side, of course. Left Chelsea for Everton for £28 million just a few years ago. He's now returned for a little bit of a cheaper fee. Only got nine goals last year, as I already touched upon. Hopefully, he can have a, a kind of a performance nearer the 22 goals a season mark that he did achieve previously. On the bench, we've got players like Iortha, Joe Gomez, Anoma. Players who were on the bench last year, really. Some of them were starters last year. Obviously, we've got real options when you look at the likes of Ross Barkley, Walcott and Ihianacho on the bench. We possess a lot of firepower kind of going forward. In the final third, we really can shake up this team. And hopefully, we shouldn't need to. But if we do... I mean, there's some game-changing players here. And I, I'm kind of excited to see what we can achieve this year. It's going to be a weird year. I don't really have a rough target in mind. Obviously, to achieve the board's expectations would be fantastic. I think that's going to be tough. But if everything can be pulled together, if we can play some nice football, I don't think it's inobtainable. And who knows, maybe we could achieve a little bit. Anyway, looking outside the side, we've got Rob Elliott and Harry Lewis. Uh, Walker's Peters, who of course we sound from Spurs, can play either fullback position. Christiansen currently out with an injury. Ryan Sesson Young, a very exciting young player, can play you know a variety of positions down the left-hand side. A little bit of interest in a loan for him, but the player's continuing to develop without regular first-team football. I'm quite content to just sit him in this side and maybe bring him on as needs must. Uh, not quite ready, I don't think, for Premier League football, but definitely almost there. There. And Jordan Ibe as well, a player who of course came in for £18 million last year, not a small fee paid by anyone's standards. He's a good player, he's a decent player for Premier League teams, he enjoys big matches, but we just have so much strength in the wide area that at least initially to start the season he is going to see himself relegated to just being kind of a fringe player on the squad. Anyway, let's get into today's opening game of the season. It's against Leicester. It's a Sunday kickoff. You can see all the other teams have already played. Uh, hopefully, we can get the result that we want. Looking at the team, other than the few injuries I already talked about, we're at full fitness. Uh, a few players lacking match fitness, but, I mean, it's inevitable. We are the favourites going into today's game. Kurt Zuma marked down as kind of our important player. And, uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. Looking at uh, Leicester, you can see they're playing a 4-1-4-1. Got the likes of Coquelin, Mvia. Uh, Herman added to the squad. So they have brought in a few new players, Carl Jenkinson as well, but there's a few familiar names, Andy King, Mares, Vardy, uh, Fuchs at left back, Wes Morgan and Robert Hoof. I, I kind of like my chances, if I'm honest, against their slow centre-backs. That is something we should really look to punish if we can. Anyway, let's see how we get on. First game back in the Premier League. I'm kind of relieved that we're here and the fact we got promoted last year. Let's see, hopefully, if we can kick on that little bit further. It's going to be I think not as easy as I want it to be this year, but I'm kind of expectant of a win, if I'm honest. So hopefully we can get off to a flying start. Lots of new players on the side. Going to take a little while, I think, for them to gel. But no, we'll play it by ear as mine. Our Odegaard goes on what would have been an incredible solo run. He's dispossessed, actually, and now Leicester coming forward. They've only got Jamie Vardy up front, which actually makes me kind of more inclined, I think, just to throw our fullbacks on attack and see what they can do, kind of perhaps pushing further forward. I'm probably now going to regret this immediately and Leicester are going to score and I'm going to look like a fool. But at the same time, we'll see how things go. Ake, right, I mean, it's not great, is it? Nathan Ake, at left back, he kicked up a fuzz about one in first team football this year and about me really wanting to back him and offer him a new contract. I've given him a new deal. He's done this. I think the goalkeeping's questionable, actually. I think the ball was hit pretty hard straight at him. 
Perhaps the decision to send the fullbacks on attack, not the smartest one, but I do feel like with Leicester's system, with them playing the one striker, we've probably got to look to push the fullbacks on a little bit. It feels a little bit wasted playing kind of a flat back four of sorts if they're just going to play, you know, the one striker in Vardy up top. I know they're going to have to like Samaras and Herman out wide either side, you know, pushing on. This goal here, though, it's Ake with a tackle. It's Vardy with a long, venomous shot. But it's not what you want to see from your goalkeeper a minute into his Premier League debut, is it? Rajkovic, definitely at fault. They're a powerful strike, but he's got to be dealing with that. It wasn't a half chance. It wasn't a clear-cut chance. It goes down as a mistake, I think, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, well, we, we need to step up. Jamie Vardy with a gashed head. Not, not a great start to his season, I guess. He scored, so maybe, maybe it's still a quite good start. But, no, the point stands. He's got a gashed head. What, I mean, gashed heads aren't that bad, so I guess he'll keep playing. But maybe that'll limit his ability in the air. Let's think through this logically. Maybe playing up top on his own, he's not going to be able to challenge quite so much. But anyway, this is going to be an interesting game just to see how we face, kind of, I guess, face up against fellow Premier League opposition and kind of a Premier League regular, a Premier League staple club at this point, Leicester, you know, a comfortable mid-table team. We're on the attack here. Fabian Delph on a booking. I don't like that after 11 minutes. That's not nice. Ake into the back post, making up for his previous mistake. Lukaku is there. And, uh, well, he scores his first goal of the season. His first goal back playing for the Blues. It's taken 13 minutes. Nathan Ake making amends for his previous mistake, the left back. Of course, on the attack duty, pushing forward. The ball floated back post. And, uh, well, Lukaku, incredible in the air. Welcome back to Stamford Bridge, my friend. He gets a goal on his debut. Fantastic start for him. Hopefully now we can kick on. I'm still concerned about the Delft yellow card. I might even take him off at half-time due to his lack of match fitness. And the fact he's on a booking. It's not great. 20 minutes gone here. The game's been pretty tight. You know, no clear-cut chances. No half-chances either, really. Just two well-taken opportunities by either side. Um, this is very much a battle of the midfield. You can see looking at possession, fairly even. Leicester's possession, uh, sorry, Leicester's pass completion, not quite so good, sitting at 68% right now. But I feel like that's kind of to be expected with them just playing the one man up top and probably playing a fairly direct system. But anyway, another booking now for Nathan Ake. He's had a weird game as Ake. I'm hoping he doesn't get sent off. I have a weird feeling we might see a sending off in this game. I don't want to say it aloud. I've just, it's an inkling. It's like a sixth sense I've kind of built up through years of playing football manager. I should react to it, but to take off a player after 40 minutes would be silly. But we have got options on the bench. Looking at the midfield performance as a whole, they've not been great. Marcus Rashford on a 6.7, Delph on a 6.8, Will Hughes not doing great either. I feel like we might be losing that midfield battle a little bit. I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy uh, with that performance. I'm also going to take off Delph. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move Will Hughes to centre mid. Uh, and then I'm actually going to bring on Ross Barkley, I think, to be our kind of playmaker. I just want to see how he lines up there playing deep line playmaker. He's a he's a pretty useful player at playmaker. You can see decent first touch. Vision, work rate, teamwork. They're all okay. They're not standout. There's an argument to say I should swap him with Odegaard and play Odegaard slightly deeper. Not a role he's very frequently played for us, but that would definitely play Ross Barkley to his strengths. I think that's what we'll do. You know, Ross ba uh, Barkley... He is a, a natural centre attack in mid. It's his best position. Let's stick him there. Move Martin Odegaard back. He can play centre mid, so that's not really a concern of mine. And uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. Walker, though, straight from kickoff. Why not? I'll tell you why not. Because it's gone straight to Zila's hands. And uh, well, he clutches onto the ball fairly gratefully. But, um, well, early signs, I promise. I guess you could say early on in the second half here. Uh, looking at the shots as a whole, again, no clear-cut chances, no half chances. I say that, there's now a few that have emerged, but, uh, you know, we've not been shown any half chances, I guess is what we're trying to say, but both teams having a few shots, but nothing really stand out. We are going to finally have a highlight, 55 minutes gone, but it is all the way back with the uh, the Leicester goalkeeper. Big ball up to Mark Albrighton, who's going to try and play in Vardy. Zuma reads that well. Worth keeping an eye on Odegaard, number 10 today, just to see how he does perform playing in that deep line playmaker role. Lallana as well, of course. Lots of new starters. To kind of, I guess, cast an eye over here. Vardy, a little bit of space, carrying a knock. Nathan Ake, I said a, I said a red card was coming. I knew it. That's six cents. That's, why could I take him off as well? You can't protect everyone, can you? You can't. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. That's what, that's what annoys me, actually, the fact I knew. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I played enough football manager to know a game uh, where a sending off is likely. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to try something a little bit ballsy here. I feel like we have to. Um, 
I guess a centre mid on attack for Barkley. Yeah, we'll go with that. I'm going to play a 4-3-2. I feel like two strikers is kind of important for us to kind of maintain. I'm going to need to bring on a left back. But we have got Joe Gomez, who's a useful little left back. So that's not too much of a concern for me, I guess, at this point. Uh, I will, however, change our fullbacks back to support. Odegaard's also probably got to be a little bit more of a roaming playmaker now, just because we're going to need him to move a fair bit. In terms of our mentality, I don't really want to change it too much. I will get rid of play out of defence. Um, playing fairly narrow is probably in our best interest. Let's close down a little bit less and sit slightly deeper, but play more direct and look to exploit the middle. We'll go with that. I'm hoping that the kind of fullbacks looking for the overlap are just going to stretch teams and create more space in the middle for us to kind of move into. We'll see how this plays out. It's going to be tricky now. We've been on top in this game, so it's a bit of a shame to go a man down. So, yeah, going with the 4-3-2. I wouldn't normally perhaps stick with the two strikers. I'd be more inclined to play a 4-4-1. Um, but I feel like we kind of have to change things up. But Leicester there, hitting the woodwork. You know, playing at home, I guess, two strikers. I like to play positive where I can. But, uh, well, Leicester with a flurry of set pieces. Get it out. The free kick dealt with. It hit the woodwork. Then that corner cleared off the line. Can we counter? Go on, Lukaku. Lazy back to Odegaard. The fullback's looking for the overlap there on the left. Worth noting that Leicester have now switched to two strikers. Might just get rid of the look for overlap instruction with that knowledge. It might be too little too late because Valencia's marauding through here. Running wide with it. Options in the middle. Crosses it. Envia's there. And Envia scores. And it's really my bad. I should have realised that Leicester were probably going to switch to two strikers. And I haven't. And, well, I've been punished for it. You can see they're playing a four... Okay, now they switch back to a 4 4 2. They were really pushing for that then. Hmm. Don't really feel like I've got a ton of options here. I feel like the fullbacks probably have to go on the attack, if I'm honest. Which might seem a little bit mad, but at least now with them dropping their kind of attacking midfielders out wide, Leicester, um, into kind of just regular wide midfielder positions, there's a little less pressure on them. We've still got one sub to make, but it's going to be tricky to have any meaningful change. Leicester still with the ball in our half here. The sending off really has hurt us. It's kind of hurt the game plan. I feel like as a manager, you can come up with contingency plans. One thing you can't really make a contingency plan for is the possibility of any player being sent off. You kind of just have to trust your players not to do anything stupid. Anyway, we are on the attack here. Down a man. Rashford bringing the ball forward. Number seven. You know, first Premier League season for him. It would have been some goal. A long-range speculative effort. Zelo holds on to it. Weird to see that either team's yet to create a clear cut chance. I want to push on both players like further forward, but Joe Gomez can't even play wing back. <laughs> but I feel like we, we well we've got we kind of got to go for it at this point, haven't we? Um, it's a little bit of a weird shape. Some people are going to be scratching their heads. Some are going to be screaming at their monitors saying, "Jack, what the hell are you creating here?" But um, <laughs> well, we've got to go direct. Let's play a lot higher pressure. Let's just close down way more. We need to work for this now and see what we can do. Uh, I've got one sub left. Looking at players in general, Odegaard's a little bit tired. Lukaku struggling as well. I'm actually going to make what might be... I was going to say I'll take off Lukaku. I'm not. I'm actually going to bring on Kelechi. A player who served us well last year. We'll see how he gets on the Nigerian international. It's such a tricky game, this one. A lot of thinking, I feel like, going into this. I feel like whenever I've done the tactical changes, I've probably gone silent more than I'd like. But, I don't know. It's it's um, it's always a bit of a, um, what's, what's the word? A brain teaser, I guess, when you get a man sent off. We're going for this game now. Let's see what we can do. Ball in Lukaku, Barkley. Walker hits it. Kyle Walker with the goal. Do I go more defensive? I have to go more defensive now. <laughs> But we get the goal. We get the goal that we were looking for, which is good. But now we now now we go back to defending just a little bit. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I'll play two centre mids, one on support, one on attack. I think. Carl Walker scores on his debut. Not something I thought I was going to say. I don't remember as many games as this where I've made so many tactical alterations as the games developed. A little bit reactionary, perhaps, but down a man. I could switch to a more defensive mentality, but it's not in my nature. We're at home. We want to go for it if we can. But it's Jenkinson bringing the ball forward. Old Brighton. There's someone free in the middle. Where's the mark in Musa? Back to Vardy. Musa was offside. I think there was a man free. Number 16. Who was that for them? 
They were clean through the ball in, not to the right man. We have now a set piece. Odegaard whips in. Wes Morgan deals with it, but only as far as the goal scorer, Carl Walker, Zuma, Gomez. Options on ahead. Can he pick out a pass? He can. Barkley, Odegaard, Lukaku. Can he get his second of the game? He hits it and he finds the back of the net. Romelu Lukaku. Now we go defensive. Now we park the bus. What a weird game this has been. What a weird game. But if we can somehow, I don't know, come, come away with this result, I'll be a very happy bunny. Waste time. Sit deeper. Let's not close down. Let's not look for the overlap. No more being expressive. Slow down the game whenever possible. Let's just play hoofball with what's left of this game. What a goal that is for Lukaku. Second goal of the game. That's what we've brought him in to do. We've brought him in because I needed a Premier League goal scorer. Players like Kelechi, Ihianaccio, players like Rashford, they scored goals in the Championship for us and they're very good players. But to have someone who's a kind of a recognised Premier League goal scorer is huge. Zila gets a massive hand to that, but it's already beyond him. It's already hitting the back of the net. And, uh, well, we just now need to defend. Five minutes left. Leicester now, the team on the attack. Ball whipped in. Deal with it, please. Will Hughes up to Ihianacho, who goes flying in there, doesn't get it on it. Jenkinson, all bright and options in the middle. Valencia near post. Rykovic this time does hold on to it. And I feel like, I hope switching to defensive isn't a mistake here. I know to stay on attacking in the formation we were using would have been mad. We're on the attack. Kelechi, can he get it through to Lukaku? He's going to be looking for his hat trick now, despite the fact we are playing on defensive. Valencia coming forward now, got pace, hits it. Way over the bar. Four minutes left plus any added time. Can we just can, can we just blow the whistle now, Lino? Well, the Lino doesn't have a whistle, but the ref. You know, if the Lino wants to raise his flag a lot, that'd be great. Ball whipped in here. It's a corner. Can we deal with it? Jenkinson hits. Oh, my God. I hate this game. Carl Jenkinson scores. It's 3-3. It's his first goal of the season. The right back at the back post from a corner. Oh, dear. The ball cleared initially by Barkley. Zuma... I don't know what he's doing. He loses his man. The shot is hit. The keeper's miscited by whoever this is here. Carl Walker blocking Mikevich's vision. It's going to finish 3-3. I mean, we've gone to say we've gone down a man, you know, and we were a man down. It was 1-0 at the time, I think. Uh, it's, oh, it's a bit bittersweet, isn't it? It's a good result, but Nathan Ake sending off has completely screwed us there. I mean... It's a roller coaster of a game. It was 1 1, of course, actually, at the sending off. But we fought back and then we let it slip. And that's kind of heartbreaking in itself. I slumped in my chair rather dramatically. It was traumatic for me, that defeat. But yeah, that's going to wrap up this game and this episode from us, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this first game of the year. Good start for Lukaku. Hopefully, he can kick on. In terms of when we'll be back, we have got City in our next game. I'm probably not going to do with that. We've got Liverpool as well, so we've got a few trickier games. For in the next game we do, I'm not sure. We've got a few fairly, I don't want to say easier games coming up. I'll probably do something like the Palace game in about a month's time. In fact, no, that's in two months' time. Fixtures are really spaced out to begin the season. It'll probably be something like the Palace game, maybe Southampton, because they've been a, a fairly well-established team. So that might be a good option, actually, to do um, Southampton. They finished eighth last year, but fourth the year before that. So they are a good team. They'll be a, a team that will be kind of worth our, while benchmarking ourselves against. Of course, last year, Leicester finished 7th, which is kind of where we're aspiring to be this year. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode for me, from me. Slightly longer one, just due to the nature of the game that we were just involved in with Leicester. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know what you made of my summer transfer dealings. What do you think of my idea to add experience? I think it's a worthwhile decision. It's already kind of paid off, I guess, with Lukaku's contributions, but I'm hoping that the likes of Nathan Ake, players we've persevered with, can really mature and grow this season and become the players we need them to be and not players who are getting sent off needlessly. Um, but no, as I said, let me know your thoughts. If you've got until this point, you know, leave a like. It's greatly appreciated. Next episode will be that game against Southampton. Hopefully I see you guys at that one. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. Tonight.